Personal notice. Changes my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Murder for Two, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine... My sister, Ruth Jennings, needs your help desperately. I've tried to get her to write you herself, but she's too upset. And she has reason to be. Her life is being threatened, Mr. Valentine, and she's helpless to do anything about it. Please don't tell us to call the police, because they and the courts have done all they can. Please come to see us after my husband has gone to work tomorrow morning, any time after 7 o'clock. I don't know what you charge, but I'm enclosing a money order so you'll know how badly we need help. Sincerely, Eunice James. Fourteen eighty-one. This is the house, George. Yeah, I guess it is, Angel. I know what you're thinking. How could anybody who lives in a place like this send you $200? Well, people fool you sometimes. Maybe they're living out here on the wrong side of the tracks and saving their money for a better day. Well, 200 bucks is 200 bucks. Let's see what's up. Okay, I'll ring. I don't quite get it, though. She said in a letter that the police and the courts have done all they can. Well, at least that makes it sound legitimate, doesn't it? Oh, I suppose it's legitimate, all right, but... All right, what do you want? Well, Valentine... Lieutenant Johnson, what are you doing here? I might ask you the same. And you might get an answer. I have a client living here. Name of... Ruth Jennings. But don't you think you might be a gentleman and answer Miss Brooks' question? I might. Come on in. I have a client here, too. Except when you have them, they're usually alive. When I get them, they're always dead. Mrs. James, I, I know you've told Lieutenant Johnson everything you can, but I figure I might be helped, too. After all, you sent for me. So, would you tell us just what happened? Well, it was... It was about 8 o'clock this morning. I heard little Emmy... That's Ruth's baby. I, I heard Emmy crying, and I, I wondered why Ruth hadn't got a bottle. I went into the room, and... and... That's when you found your sister had been killed? <laughs> Yes, the, the baby was in the bassinet, and she was there in her bed, and there was blood all over. I, I went to her, but I knew it was too late. Uh, tell me, Mrs. James, didn't you hear a shot at any time? No, I, I don't think so. Sometime during the night, I, I heard something that sounded like a car backfiring, but I, I didn't think anything of it. I went right back to sleep. And was your husband here? I, I didn't call him. He, he was in his bed. It was dark, and... Please, please don't suspect Bert. He'd never do a thing like that. Mrs. James, in your letter, you said your sister's life was being threatened. Somebody wanted to kill her. Who? Her husband, that's who. They're divorced. He, he wanted the baby. He said if she didn't give him the baby, he'd kill her, and he did. Mm-hmm. And were your sister and your husband on good terms? Of course. Oh, Bert was always telling Ruth to get a place of her own so we could have our privacy. But he's a very calm man. He, yes, he's... yes, I understand, Mrs. James. Now, uh, Lieutenant Johnson tells me the shotgun that killed your sister was found at the foot of her bed. Did your husband own a shotgun? No, he didn't. He didn't even like hunting. Did your brother-in-law own one? Well, I'm sure he did. He was quite a hunter. He used to go out in the desert all the time to shoot rabbits. What's, and... uh, what's the husband's name, Mrs. James? It's Lou. Lou Jennings. Uh-huh. Where does he live? We don't know that. All we know is that he works at a lunchroom on Barton Avenue. Nick's All Night Cafe, it's called. You have the address of the place? No, we, we don't. We weren't interested. Ruth was trying to get Lou out of her life entirely. Yes, I understand. Uh, but you feel very sure that... Valentine. Yes, Lieutenant? Come on out here. I want to talk. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. James. We'll see what we can do. Brooksy? All right, George. Goodbye, Mrs. James. Goodbye, Miss Brooks. 
Mr. Valentine? Any leads, Johnson? Any fingerprints on that shotgun? No. What time was she killed? Doc says somewhere around midnight. Now look, Valentine, I realize you had a client, but your client is dead, murdered. So you don't have a job anymore. And when there's a murder, we have some people call the police or handle these things. But, Lieutenant... That's all right, Brooksy. I understand what the good lieutenant means. Okay, Johnson, it's your baby. Good luck. Well, thanks. For once, you're using sense and staying out of my hair. Be seeing you. I'm afraid. Yeah, sure, sure, Lieutenant. Sorry I can't give you a hand here. Let's go, Angel. But, George... So long, Johnson. George Valentine, sometimes I can't understand you. No? Why not? Well, in the first place, it isn't like you to walk out on a case. And in the second place, you took $200 from those people and you should... No, no, don't get in an uproar, Angel. They'll get their money's worth. Huh? What do you mean? How? Oh, I just have a feeling Johnson could use a little help, even though he doesn't seem to think so. Besides, I like to earn my fees. So what are you going to do? So I'll take a little trip out to Nick's All Night Cafe. Want to come along and have a hamburger? You, you are the people who want to see me? Yeah, you're the owner of this cafe? That's right, I'm Nick. My name is Valentine, and Nick, this is Miss Brooks. Hello, Miss Brooks. How do you do? Uh, what can I do for you? Well, you have a man by the name of Jennings, Lou Jennings. He's working here, huh? Oh, sure, sure, that's right. Well, we'd like to talk to him, Nick. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but this is not possible right now. Jennings, he's on nights. He works from 6 in the evening to 6 in the morning. Uh-huh. Did he work last night? Oh, Sure. Did he leave here any time during those 12 hours? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Why you look for him? He's uh, connected with something that happened last night, Nick. Say, tell me, uh, was there any time that he might have left before 6 o'clock this morning without your knowing? No. no. Only during the time I take my wife home. About 12 o'clock. She helps How me. long were you gone then, Nick? I don't know. Maybe a half an hour, no more. George, that could be it. They don't know exactly what time the murder took place, murder? remember? Is that what you say? Oh, if he's mixed up in we the murder... We don't eh? know that he is, Nick, but uh, we want to find out. I suppose you have his home address. Oh, sure. It's on the... Uh, wait, I look in my book. Uh... Oh, yeah. Here it is. On Elizabeth Street. 1036. Okay, thanks. Yeah, but... Jennings, I don't understand. You mean he could be mixed up in a murder? It's quite possible he isn't, Nick. Matter of fact, I have some other ideas myself. Okay, Brooksy, you go back to the office and wait for me. I'm going out to Elizabeth Street and have a chat with Lou Jennings. Yes? Hello, Lou Jennings. Uh, Lou Je Oh, goodness, no, no, you have the wrong room. Uh, my name is Ferris, Oscar Ferris. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, Jennings does live here. Yes, yes, a second door down the hall. Oh, thanks. Think he's in now? Well, now, I really wouldn't know about that. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, sorry to bother you, thanks. That's quite all right. Yeah? Lou Jennings? Yeah, that's right. Mind if I come in? Oh, now, wait a minute. Look, what... Thanks. My name's Valentine. I just want to ask you some questions. What kind of questions? For one thing, I'd like to know where you were last night. All last night. What do you want to know for? Want it straight? Well, sure, okay. but I... Okay. Would... Because something's happened and the police think you're responsible. What do you mean, something has happened? I suppose you know your wife's been murdered. Oh. Yeah? Just, uh... Oh, Yeah. You don't seem very surprised or upset. Surprised? Sure, sure I am. But I'm not very upset. She's pretty nasty to me. Wouldn't even let me see my own kid. Yeah, I know that. Did you kill your wife, Jennings? <laughs> no. No, of course I didn't kill her. I got an alibi, you know. Oh, yeah, sure. It looks that way. But where were you while your boss was away from the cafe last night? Well, I was right there all the time. Oh, yeah? Any customers? Yeah, a couple of guys come in, but I didn't know them. Oh, that's too bad. Might have given you a perfect alibi. Don't worry, I got one. 
You don't think I could get over to the James house and back and kill my wife besides while the boss was out there? Maybe not. Look, Jennings, don't be surprised if a Lieutenant Johnson comes by to pick you up. I got nothing to worry about. Okay, okay. And since you didn't kill her, got any ideas who did? No. What would I know? Unless that dirty brother-in-law of hers... Hey, Lou, I got a good way to get rid of those... Oh, I... I didn't know there was anybody here. Ah, it's all right, Jim. It's all right. Come on in. This is Jim Grayson, Mr. Valentine, another hash slinger. Lives in the next room. We both work nights. Valentine is kind of a private eye or something, Jim. Private eye? But what... He tells me my wife was killed last night. Ruth? Gosh. She... She what? Yeah. Uh, Somebody didn't like her and just bumped her off, I guess. You, uh, think I'm crying? No. No, I... I know how you felt about Ruth. All right, gentlemen, all right. I'm... I'm afraid I have to go. I just can't stand your grief. And, uh, give my regards to Lieutenant Johnson, will you, Jennings? I've been very patient. But would you mind telling me what you're doing? We drive to Nick's Cafe and you don't go in. Then you start driving to James' house. Where I also won't go in. Well, here we are. What are you trying to prove, George? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Took us just 15 minutes. So? So, Lou Jennings didn't kill his wife. And would you mind telling me what process of deduction brought you to that conclusion? Simple. The boss was away for half an hour. Jennings was there when he got back. If it takes 15 minutes each way to the James house, how would anyone have time to get in and out of a car on both ends? And and... murder somebody besides I know. Then who did? I don't know yet. But I just want to check up on another hash slinger after he goes to work tonight. Another one? Who? A fellow by the name of Grayson has the next room to Jennings in that rooming house. They might possibly be in cahoots. He said something that didn't sound quite kosher while I was out there. Such as? Such as, I got a way to get rid of those... Those what? That's what I'd like to know. Because maybe he didn't yet. We're going to take another little trip out to that rooming house tonight after Grayson goes to work. And, Brooksy, maybe we'll find out. Well, that was easy enough, George. Don't any rooming houses ever lock their doors? I guess not, Angel. Well, this is Jennings' room. The next one is Grayson's. For the moment, one of my two candidates. But whatever he'd found a way to get rid of, maybe he did. Uh Uh-huh, and maybe he didn't. Uh, No light under the door, so he's out all right. Well, here we go. Must be a light switch someplace. Whatever. Here it is. Yeah. I always feel like a criminal when we walk into somebody's house. George, what... Oh. Yeah. It's Jim Grayson, all right. But I'm afraid he can't help us much with a bullet through his neck. He's dead. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Listen to the difference. Yes, now you can actually hear authentic scientific proof of the difference between new RPM motor oil and premium type motor oils as designated by the American Petroleum Institute. Auto engines are equipped with irradiated piston rings and during operation, minute particles of radioactive metal wear off the rings. Geiger counters are thus able to detect the amount of wear actually taking place. Listen now as the Geiger counters click off the difference. First, the low wear rate of new RPM. Now, the much faster wear rate of the conventional oil. Now, new RPM again. You have just heard authentic, scientific proof that new RPM motor oil cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts, doubles the life of the average auto engines between major overhauls due to lubrication. 
Proved in the laboratory and checked out in severe road service, new RPM motor oil is sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction. Ask for it at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. murders his wife, or so the police think. But if your name is George Valentine, you can't just figure out how he could possibly have done it in the short time for which he doesn't have an alibi. You suspect an accomplice, the man who lives next door in his rooming house, a Jim Grayson. But he can't tell you anything now, because he's dead. Maybe that washes up the case. Maybe Lou Jennings killed the man he hired to kill his wife. But you don't think so. Somebody killed Ruth Jennings, and somebody killed Jim Grayson, but... Who? That's what I want to know, who? What about Lou Jennings, George? You thought maybe Jennings and Grayson were in cahoots, and if they... Miss Brooks, Lou Jennings couldn't have killed this guy. He's in custody. I picked him up this afternoon. You've got Jennings in custody for what? Suspicion of murder. After what you found out, George, Lieutenant Johnson will have a hard time proving that, won't he? Wait a minute. Just what did you find out? That it was practically impossible for him to have murdered his wife. Matter of chronologics, old boy. Uh, Matter of what? Nothing, nothing. Just proves that when you go to school, people who didn't can't understand you. But I did go to... Hey, Valentine, where are you going? Like I said about the last one, this is your baby, Johnson. See you later. But, 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 but... but, Don't make like a goat, Lieutenant. Stop butting. Goodbye. George. Yeah, Angel. You didn't have to be quite so disagreeable to Lieutenant Johnson, did you? He's been nice to you. Yeah? When? Mention once. Well, uh, I can't. But the stairs are the other way, George. Why are we Just going... Just a neighborly call, that's all. You know who lives in this room? By name only. Met him this afternoon. Timid little character by the name of Oscar Ferris. What are you trying to... Yes? How do you do, Sam? Oh, how do you do... Oh, you're the man who was here before. Yeah, that's right. My name's Valentine, and this is Miss Brooks. Mind if we come in? Well, what can I say? But I don't understand. Just wanted to ask you a question or two, that's all. Like, uh, did you hear a commotion in the next room any time this afternoon? A commotion? Oh, goodness, no. Was there one? You've been in your room here for the past few hours? Yes, yes, of course. You know the man who lives in the next room? Oh, yes, yes. Fellow by the name of Grayson. Rather a nice chap, I think. He was a nice chap, you mean. What's that? I'm afraid Mr. I Mr. Grayson is dead. Dead? Why, he seems such a healthy sort of man. I can't understand. What's your business, Mr. Ferris? Me? Well, I'm retired, so I don't really have any business anymore. I devote most of my time to church work. I teach Sunday school, you know, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm just surprised that you didn't hear all the noise in the next room. The police have been there for quite a while. The police? But why in the world would the police be interested in Mr. Grayson? Well, I guess they wouldn't if he'd died a normal death, Mr. Ferris. You see, he was murdered. Murdered? Oh, good grief. Oh, that's horrible. But I can't understand why I didn't hear a gun going off and right in the next room, too. Oh. No, I, I can't understand that either, Mr. Ferris. Oh, goodness. I wish I could be of some help. Well, perhaps you can. You know, sometimes just a little information helps the police quite a lot. You, uh, you wouldn't mind going down to police headquarters with Lieutenant Johnson and telling him everything you know about Grayson, would you? And about Lou Jennings? Lou Jennings? Well, what's he got to do with all this? Maybe nothing, Mr. Ferris, but after all, he's Mr. Grayson's neighbor in the room on the other side. Oh, we... yes, yes, I see, of course. You mean Jennings might be involved in this thing some way. Uh, where is he? Uh, he's down at headquarters already, Mr. Ferris. Oh, well, of course. I'll help all I can. Good, thanks. Hey, Brooksy, go next door and tell Lieutenant Johnson that Mr. Ferris is anxious to cooperate. We'll see you later, Ferris. George. Yeah, Brooksy? You picked up a paper from Mr. Ferris's table when he wasn't looking, didn't you? <laughs> you notice everything, don't you? Well, why'd you pick it up? Oh, my gastronomic urge got the better of me, Angel. It was a menu from Nick's Cafe. It sort of intrigued me. Oh. All right. Be an enigma. You think he knows anything? I don't know. I just can't understand why he didn't hear anything in the next room, that's all. Even if you're reading next week's Sunday school lesson, you could still hear... Hey, wait a minute. Get in the car. 
George, what is it? You got something? Probably not, but it's worth a try. What are you going to do? Go back to the James house. Where Ruth Jennings was killed? Yeah. What good will that do? Maybe nothing. I don't know. Just trying to tie in some loose ends. But, George, if you think Jennings and Grayson were in cahoots and Grayson killed Ruth Jennings... No, I'm all tangled up. I'm sort of tangled up myself, Angel. We might find something that'll help us untangle. I hope. <laughs> I'm sorry we have to get you up at this time of night, Mrs. James. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Valentine. Lieutenant Johnson was here a while ago, too, but he left. Is your husband home now, Mrs. James? Uh, no, he, he isn't. He, he was here, but he left about 8 o'clock. He was going out to play poker with some friends. Of well, uh, we don't want to keep you up, but we didn't want you to be wondering what was going on. I'd just like to take a look around the back of the house, if you don't mind. Oh, I know. That, that's all right. Just uh, to get one thing straight, you feel sure that the person who killed your sister came in the back door some way? Is that right? Oh, yes. I locked the door before we went to bed. But in the morning, the back door was unlocked, and, and Bert always goes out the front door when he leaves for work. That's a snap lock. Ah, yeah, I see, Mrs. James. Well, thank you. And don't be worried if you hear us poking around the backyard, will you? Of course not. And well, I do hope you can find out who killed Ruth. I will we'll try. Uh, this way to the back door? Yes, right out there. I I'll let you out and lock it after you. Uh, unless you need me some more. No, I'm sure we won't, Mrs. James. Good night. Good night. All right, George, would you mind telling me just what you hope to find out here? Is it... Do you think the murderer lives here? Do you think Bert James... Angel, is... please, I haven't the slightest idea. It's a shot in the dark. Well, as long as we don't get shot in the dark. Hmm. I always knew there'd be some use for this pencil flashlight you gave me for Christmas, Brooksy. Well, I thought it might be. Yeah. A chicken house. I don't see... You're not going in there. Sure, sure. And you're going to stay outside and wait for me. Outside, you. Inside, just us chickens. George. Wait right there, Angel. Be out in a minute. Please hurry, George. I don't like it. Oh, shut up. It isn't morning yet. Well, look, this is just a flashlight. It's not going to hurt you. Well, let's see. Sacks of feed. Nothing behind there except crates. It's probably a wild goose chase anyway, but... Uh-oh. Hey, it looks like blood. Uh-huh. And on the inside. Brooksy, I got something. George. Cut down, Brooksy. Don't let them see you. I'm coming out. Hurry, George. Somebody... Keep down, Angel. We're going to get out of here. Hey, you think it's Bert? think he's been outside the house here all the time? Could be. I don't know. Probably saw the flashlight and heard the hen setting up a row. It's fairly dark anyway. We'll make for the back of the yard. Come on. Yeah, okay, George. Take it easy now. Kind of my... Don't make any noise. Well, how can you help it when you... All right, stand still, you. I got you covered. George, that sounded yeah, like... Yeah, how could you mistake that voice? Okay, Johnson, we'll go peaceably. Hey, hey, what in the name of heaven are you doing? That's Valentine, isn't it? Sure, Johnson. Brooksy gave me a flashlight for Christmas, and I was just trying it out. Look, Valentine, didn't I tell you this morning that we have some people called the police who handle, handle these, these things? things I uh, what were you doing in that chicken house? Just being a good scout, trying to give you a helping hand, Lieutenant. Now all you have to do is find the hands that were in these blood-stained work gloves and the hand that held this flashlight. You found those in there? Yeah, that's right, and I'm turning them over to you for evidence. Might check the prints on that flashlight, too. Now, uh, will you do me a little favor? Yeah, what? Let's have a little party down at the headquarters. Would you mind inviting three people in for questioning? What three people? Lou Jennings, if you're not still holding him. Oscar Ferris, who lives in his boarding house. And Bert James, if you can find out where he's playing poker. Valentine, are you nuts? Jennings has a perfect alibi. We've released him. Ferris is a little Sunday school teacher who wouldn't hurt a flea and... Oh. You think... Sometimes I do... I have an idea one of those three is going to give us a tip to two murders. See you at headquarters in half an hour. Okay, right in here, Mr. Ferris. Guess you know Mr. Valentine. He wants to ask you some questions. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Valentine? Oh, hello, Mr. Ferris. Yes, I, uh... I wanted to ask you how long you've known Lou Jennings. Oh, I don't know. Six months, I guess. Mm -hmm. How'd you meet him? Why, in the cafe where he works, I think. Yes, that was it. I was saying that I had to move. 
And he told me he'd get me a room in the boarding house where he lives. He was very nice. Do you know Jennings' wife, Mr. Ferris? No, I don't. I believe they're divorced. Look, Valentine, you're acting like the D.A. Just what do you... Just a second, Lieutenant, please. Ferris, I gather you must be uh, pretty good friends since Jennings owed you money. Owed me money? What do you mean? This... I picked up this menu from Nick's Cafe when we were in your room this morning. It says, uh, when you get back from your trip, I'll see that you get your $1,000. And it's signed, Lou Jennings. Oh, yes, that. Well, I, I did advance Jennings money. You didn't money. advance Jennings anything, Ferris. That was the money you were to get for killing his wife. I'm killing his... Well, what do you mean? Just what I said. You killed Ruth Jennings, Lou Jennings' wife. His wife? Wait, well, no, I... Why, that dirty rat. He didn't tell me that... He didn't tell you what, Ferris? But I, I didn't know it was his wife. But you did but know I... it was Grayson when you killed him, didn't you? He'd heard you make the deal with Jennings, and you were afraid he'd spill the whole thing. Well, Jennings got me into this. He told me it was some woman who had an incurable disease, and her husband would pay $1,000 to have her done away with. Told me just how to do it. Why don't you get Jennings? We've got Jennings in the other room, Ferris. Why, that dirty rat... He never did pay me. All he gave me was $50 on account. Yeah, well, you won't need money now. Maybe Jennings will only get life. But you'd better be deciding what you want for your last dinner. George. Hmm? Why did you suspect Ferris in the first place? Oh, because when we asked him if he heard a commotion in the next room when Grayson was murdered, he said he hadn't heard a gun going off. I didn't say Grayson was shot. And that note from Jennings on the back of our menu, that didn't taste good to me. Yeah, I know. But why did those things in the chicken house prove anything against Ferris? Well, he must have been a very careful guy, Brooks. He didn't want to lose anything. He forgot that inside those work gloves, he'd carefully marked O.F. for Oscar Ferris. Oh, But you suspected Grayson once before he was killed. What did he find a way to get rid of? Warts. Warts? Yeah, he had a bottle of stuff on his dresser with a big label. Now you can get rid of warts. (laughs) Oh, big clue, huh? Yeah, big clue. Oh, look, Angel, it's all over. We've made $200. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. And we're two sleepy people, but too much. Too much what, Angel? Don't you ever remember any old popular songs, darling? Too sleepy people, but too much in love to say... Oh. Darling, you remembered. You're wonderful. When your car begins to squeak and rattle, it's saying, money, 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 money. And it's a reminder that 60% of all auto repair bills are the fault of irregular and poor lubrication. You can avoid those repair bills and at the same time enjoy smoother, quieter riding the year round. Just come back to your independent Chevron gas station or your standard station every thousand miles. Here, chassis lubrication is another car saver service that is done thoroughly and correctly. The car savers check more than 50 different trouble points, and they follow a lubrication chart that is designed specifically for your car. Another important thing, they do a neat, clean lubrication job. So if you've already driven 1,000 miles or more without a chassis lubrication, why not ask for this car saver service tomorrow? Ask at your standard station or your independent Chevron gas station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written and directed by Don Clark. Ken Christie as Lieutenant Johnson. Michael Ann Barrett was heard as Eunice. Anthony Barrett as Lou. Howard McNear as Ferris. And Jack Crucian as Nick. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. 
Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.